We are Cactus Wrestling. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Cactus Wrestling is now available on Spotify and Amazon. And don't forget to check us out on Etsy for all of your Cactus Wrestling apparel needs. Welcome back to Cactus Wrestling. It's another rankings video, this time 174 pounds. One of the more exciting weight classes, I think, because mm -hmm. of the newcomers. I think oh, yeah. uh, of the of the top five we have, four of them were not at this weight class last year. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Who do we got? Looking forward, who, looking who, forward to it. Who are we talking about? Who are we going to have as number one? You know this is a uh, this you is know our, our preferences. Who's going to be number one? Let's see. Let's share. All right. Here we go. Oh. All right. Let's oh, get no. into it. Keegan O'Toole, number one at 174. Now, Mike does not agree with this. Uh, Me, Mike. Mike McKeever does, by the way. So when you when you comment, make sure you say that. The Mike that's here in the video who can speak for himself does not agree with this. So I'll, I'll yes. let you speak why Levi should be number one. So everyone was curious how Levi was going to do going up from 57 to 74. Um, we saw him at the trials and he looked massive first off. Like I almost didn't recognize him for a second. Um, I was like, wow, he filled out like, like crazy. Like he must've been cutting an arm and a leg to make the weight. But anyway, I'm going off of a freestyle result, which is controversial. Jack will explain why he thinks, based off that result, Keegan should be number one. So my point is that Levi beat him on their feet in clean, non-controversial, folk-style takedowns. He, he was able to win in that area. He, I distinctly remember you know, Keegan has such a great sprawl, Levi – just uh, horses him up back to their feet, finishes it clean folk style takedown. Um, because of that result and getting blanked six to zero, I think Levi is much better off than I thought. Prior to that match, I would have agreed Keegan O'Toole is the number one guy, but Levi has opened the door for doubt in my mind. And as a Penn State wrestler, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. And I'm going to say Levi is my number one. Jack, why do you think, based off that match, Keegan should not be fault? You know, should not be, you know, penalized. Well, first of all, first off, give Levi respect where it's due. He did blank Keegan. Yes. And I give him that credit. Mm -hmm. But who is who was Keegan O'Toole's high school coach? Okay, that's fair. I, I know where you're going with this. <laughs> so Mitchell and what would you say what would you say keegan o'toole is known for scrambling scrambling right and when you're in freestyle you just can't scramble yeah. to yeah. the same ability that you can in a folk style match so kudos yeah. to levi for getting in on the shots but if you watch those takedowns keegan you can't funk you can't funk at all in in folk style mm -hmm. it's just it's a different it's an exposure it's a different point. sport yeah. almost. Yep. So for a guy who and we've seen Keegan out scramble David Carr in incredible shots, and that's where he thrives. And I think it's going to be very different dynamic when Levi gets in on those shots, and a guy like Keegan who's very comfortable with that positioning, um, to to scramble in that position and be able to counter and score off of Levi's attacks. Um, so, I think 65 Keegan may have had some issues. I mean, we saw him losing against Julian Ramirez during the season. We saw him losing a match to Peyton Hall. I mean, he did come back and win those. Um, mm -hmm. And it's like, you can't really say a loss to David Carr is like a bad thing, but because um, David Carr is an incredible talent, but I would have been very interested to see how Keegan, Keegan did against Mitchell. Um, last year so yeah. going up a weight class i think benefits keegan um especially with scrambling at a higher weight class where i feel like guys aren't as proficient in scrambling so honestly 
I could see this being a toss up. I think given that Keegan's a two time champ, he gets the nod in my head. And the yeah. only loss he had last year was to a, an also two time NCAA champion, David Carr. Um, whereas Leah Levi had Jacory Teamer, no disrespect to Jacory Teamer. Um, but it's a little bit <laughs> a bit yeah, different. It's, a little, it's not it's not the same, you know, national championship, I understand. Um, before we move on from the freestyle match, though, I, I will say this. Keegan did beat David Carr in their freestyle matchup in the same tournament. Um and, top of, top and, of Pokemon Triangle. And David Carr beat Levi. <laughs> um, but again, David Carr and Keegan O'Toole were both at one point U20 74 kilo world champions. To say Keegan is not a good freestyle wrestler, and you didn't say it, but to say that he's a you know, he he's a top freestyle wrestler. I mean, he's had close matches with Jason Nall, who is you know, was number three or four in on the world rankings before his retirement. Um, Levi Haynes is not known for his freestyle. He actually lost to Alex Facundo. Um, and I think it just shows just how much improvement he's made as a wrestler to go into his worst style and beat someone of Keegan's caliber. That's why, in my opinion, again, I think he's going to jump levels like we haven't seen from Levi Haynes. Yeah, like I said, it's going to be very interesting. I think they're yeah, going to be... I'm so excited for this matchup. Once This is a super match right here. We yeah. talk about uh, Car- Carter versus Parker. This is mm-hmm. a super match. Keegan versus Levi. Number three is the Rocco Welsh. Second place last year. Uh, but some people will say, oh, his side of the bracket was a joke. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that 74 was pretty weak last year especially when you had uh Mackay, carter and shane griffith all on the same side three national champions yeah and rocka welsh he's tough but he's got no offense and i don't yeah, think I he's say, ever gonna score on either of the top two guys i don't know if we'll see rocka welsh make it back to the national finals if he continues to wrestle the way he does for the rest of his career um i think that as a freshman, a lot of people were like, oh, you know, we don't know what to expect. There's not a ton of film on him yet. But now they've seen him at an NCAA tournament, and guys are going to make the adjustment. And it's now the ball's in Rocco Welsh's court. Are you going to become the more offensive wrestler that you know you need to be? Or are you going to say, hey, I took second as a freshman. That's pretty good. We'll see how I do this year. Um, I actually could see him losing to, you know, Dean Hamity. Yeah, I do too. The only reason I, I, I feel like I couldn't put Hamity higher yeah. just because, uh, his performance you know, last season. his performance last season, granted, he was beating Messenbrink and he he gave the match away. I he mean, I don't it. know yep. what Big happened. Tens. He blew yeah, it. He, I mean, he, he was he was up big. He took him down like he was nothing, yeah. like three Twice. times in a row. Yeah, two or three. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. He hit the wall. Like, I've never seen someone hit a wall before. Yeah. In and then life, he lost uh, to Olenek yeah. as well. Um, yep. Who's, an, be, again, another quality wrestler. The 65s was stacked last year. I think that's yeah. what 74 has become this year. I could very yeah. well see Hamity. Um, right, honestly, talent-wise, he's right up there with O'Toole and Haynes. I don't think he'll beat either of them. But... I don't think, yeah, I think he's like, if they're 1A, he's maybe 1B. But I would still say that Keegan and Levi, to me, are kind of their own separate like tier, their own island. And then other guys are like, well, you know, below them obviously yeah but we talk about you know the transfer effect i mean he's now at at oklahoma state and i think that could be really helpful for him with a guy like david taylor yeah because dean hammity i mean he's a he's a pinner he he's bonuses guys david taylor stylistically that's a match made in heaven Mm -hmm. so he could pick up a thing or two and really do some serious damage uh and honestly someone that knows levi haynes pretty well david taylor yeah I mean, for sure. David Taylor was his club coach. Yeah, that's true. That's He's known Levi since he was a kid. That's I think, yeah. You know, this this could be. I don't think it's going to spell disaster for Levi, but if I doesn't I'm help Dean, him. Doesn't help. If him. I'm Dean Hammond, you know, I'm I'm rubbing my hands together. I'm like, oh man, the, you know, the scheme is is on. Right. Let's so, talk about uh, number five. Number five, Mike Long does not agree with this at all. Maybe it's the Iowa hatred. Uh, <laughs> I'm just not sure Gabe's going to start. I mean, and you and I kind of talked about this off screen is, you know, Iowa has Gabe Arnold, they have Pat Kennedy, they have Nelson Brands, you know, the the gambler's back. Um, I don't know if 
you know, can Patrick Kennedy makes, does he go 65? No, um, they got Caliendo. That's what I mean. Like, you know, where does, where do they shift this lineup? Um, and does Gabe Arnold, does he beat Pat Kennedy? And sometimes I say yes, sometimes I say no. And again, a lot of this I'm basing off their their freestyle success because that's all we're really seeing in this offseason. You know, Gabe Arnold lost to a in two straight to Zach Ryder. Right now, we see a, you know, Patrick Kennedy is getting ready for U23 Worlds. His performance there, I think, will make a big impact on who's going to be the guy for Iowa at 174. Yeah, it's a good point. I I, I have high upside on Gabe Arnold uh, since he huge upside. The guys, you know, he's just in his in his you know we saw him beat high tier all americans yeah feldkamp uh of iowa state yeah. last year he beat um and he was close with dustin plot if i remember correctly yeah i'm trying to pull up that uh five to plot one on, yeah five yeah, to one and plot went on to take second at nationals i mean and he also he, did, he bonused his way to nationals. He also did beat Lennox Wallach, who later on uh, All American. Yeah, so I mean, I could totally see him there. I don't know if Iowa wants to kind of let him sit another year and say, okay, you know, Patrick Kendi will go up or we'll graduate. Nelson Brands will use his last year of eligibility, and then I wonder, is Gabe Arnold good enough to go up to one eighty four and just beat Nelson Brands straight up for the spot? Yeah, yeah. So this is definitely a question mark. I see him as an All-American. I think he's got All-American potential at 174 or 184. I just don't know where he's going, assuming he's the guy that's going. Right. So, uh, yeah, drop, drop a comment. Where do you think Gabe Arnold uh, in Iowa will land at 174? Um, number six, we have Cade Devos. Uh all American for the first time last year, fifth place, South Dakota State. They always get these guys. I mean, like they they progress super well. Who was the guy uh, at ninety seven who made the Tanner Sloan? Tanner Sloan. Like they get these guys. Damian Hahn and company really does a, a good job developing these yeah. guys to yep. like high caliber top talent. Yeah. From like not saying he was a bad recruit out of high school, but like. You can see see the trajectory. They yeah. they always go in the right direction. So qualifier, qualifier, round of twelve, fifth. I mean, you're right. You know, Coach Han and his staff do a great job of getting guys that are that are good to great and getting guys that are great to phenomenal. I mean, you said it best. Tanner Sloan was not someone that I don't think many people had pegged as a national champ, national finalist coming out of high school. Right. So uh, yeah, we have him at number six, Lennox Wallach. Transferred to Virginia Tech. He All-American for Columbia last year. We have him at number seven. Uh, Simon Ruiz, Cornell, freshman. Yeah. I think uh, I think he's got some high upside. He mm -hmm. redshirted last year, fourteen and one. Uh, if I remember correctly, he had some he had some close matches uh, throughout the season. I'm trying to pull it up right here. Um, let's see. He. He lost to Rocco Welsh in overtime. And, and he beat so, he also beat Lennox Wallach. Tough day to be Lennox Wallach. <laughs> yeah. Um, so maybe so, maybe I should switch this. Lennox Wallach uh should be behind him. Hmm, this is a head to head. Now the case that I asked for with Simon Ruiz and, and Rocco Welsh, did it go overtime because of Rocco's defensive style of like, let's go one one? And then we'll see what happens in overtime for the takedown. Um, or did it go overtime because he really is just that talented? Well, that's the problem with Rocco. He yeah. he loves taking matches to overtime and turning on the Jets in overtime, getting that takedown. Mm -hmm. I wish that he had that urgency when he wrestled Carter last year. Um, <laughs> because he, he, I mean, hey, whether he was injured or not, he kept the match with Carter close both times he wrestled him. So, um I think that's just the style of wrestler that Rocco is. Yeah. But credit to Simon Ruiz as well. Number nine, MJ Gaitan. Uh, he had kind of an up and down season last year for Iowa State, but he yeah. ended up round to 12. Um, I think he's probably still in that range 
given that it's such a tough weight class this year and there's so many newcomers, I don't necessarily see him all American name, but um, he's right in that kind of fringe area, I think. I just remember him against Pat Kennedy and the storming back of Pat Kennedy. When right. That was, was his like, first match back, right? Yeah. Or something like yeah, that. Yeah, first match back for Pat Kennedy. And Guy Tan just had no answer for it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Iowa State, looking at just some of these teams, Cornell's got a solid squad. Virginia Tech, we've talked about, silently building a very good program. Um, trying to jump levels there. Recruiting well. We talked about it at a who's number one. They have some great incoming guys. They have great guys waiting, the, you know, kind of in the wings with Lennox Wallach. And then Iowa State, I mean, MJ Gaetan. Is this the year Iowa State finally beats Iowa in the duel? Yeah, you guys you guys thought they were going to be last year. I thought last year was it, but, you know, maybe it's this year. Could be. Uh, number 10, Nick Contrera from Penn. He was around a 16 guy. You know, that's that's the thing with the last year. This guy was ranked like five and six all season yeah. long. Um, and it was really just like the three headed monster at the top and then everyone else. So there was really no depth last year. But different story this year. He's bumped all the way to 10. Um, Gavin Sachs transferred so, out of North Dakota State to Oklahoma this year. He was around a 12 guy. So he's following uh, Roger Kish. To, to circle back to you, Penn, I have an insider there, a uh, former wrestler that's at, that you know is on their club team, and um, he told me the other day, he goes, the guys here do not like the coaching staff. And he goes, and so partly the way they run their program is why they always underperform at Nationals. Because you look at their roster, they have some great talent, they have great recruiting, their RTC looks solid, but for whatever reason – they do not like the coaching staff, a lot of the wrestlers, and it causes them to underperform at nationals. So looking at a guy like Nick, you know, in Contrera, who was ranked very high and then dropped the ball, and you're like, what happened? And then you can look at a lot of the UPenn guys that they've had, and they're ranked high, and then they kind of just fizzle. That's interesting. Um, Roger Raina is the – I thought he was retiring. Yeah. Maybe he is. He's been there forever. Mm hmm so maybe it's a change in the guard thing. Darian Cruz is there. Matt Valenti is uh, Matt Valenti is the uh, associate head coach. Um, yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. Love the inside scoop. Oh yeah. Um, so Jared Sima of Northern Iowa. Um, we have him as number twelve. And again, from kind of ten onwards, it can kind of mix and match here. I don't think there's yeah. like leaps and bounds ahead. Um, Alex Kramer, Central Michigan, round of 16 guy, Lorenzo Norman. He was uh, infamous for beating Shane Graf Griffith um, yeah. <laughs> uh, during his uh, red shirt year, um, which was funny. Adam Kemp, uh, Lee Kemp's uh, son, and uh, had to throw in Brevin Casella, Binghamton. Although I don't think Brevin has ever had a success at this weight class in the past. Every time he wrestles up at 74, he doesn't tend to do well. He was good at 65. Yeah. He is very tall and he's got good good with legs. He gave Messenbrink um a close ish match. I think he still got majored, but I thought he was teched, but I could be he, wrong. No, he got teched during the season, but then he wrestled him at Nationals. Oh, okay. And I think he only got majored. Close the gap. Close the gap. Close the gap, yeah. Um but... so one guy that we don't have that you and I talked about. There's been reports of Lenny Pinto going down to 174. Um, some some rankings have him at 174. I believe he's listed at 184 on Nebraska's, you know, home, you know, on the roster. Home. Yep. But, you know, Jack and I talked about this. Lenny Pinto is a big looking 184. Like, I think he's teetering on 197. I think he'd go up before he went down. Um, and then additionally, you know, Silas Allred is still around yeah so, 97 you know, yeah yeah so that's what i mean like yeah, i don't think he's going up and i don't see a reason for him to go down no lenny pinto is very thick and i don't i don't see him um although he does have a yeah and he has a gas tank issue at 84 yeah, I, yeah, yeah so that it doesn't make any sense yeah. why well, he would he go down 74 that'd be yeah so I, I don't see it maybe uh maybe any nebraska fans uh 
might care to comment, give us the inside scoop. We we love a good scoop. I'll tell you what though, he would be strong as all hell at one eighty at one seventy four because he's physical looking right now. He would be if he could, you know, his gas tank, like you said, would probably not be great. But man, for thirty five to you know forty five seconds, he'd be a tank. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we always love a good, uh, you know, one minute uh, sprint. Yeah. Uh, so there you have it. There's 174 pound rankings. Biggest question is Levi versus Keegan. Where do you think the rankings should lie? Should it be Levi number one? I already know some of the commenters is that have already said that Levi ran train at 157 and he's going to continue running train at 174. You might be right, but we'll see what happens on the folk style stage. He still is going up two weight classes. We already talked about the impact on that. I remember when Hayden Hydley went from 57 to 74. He's still all American at 74. It wasn't that big a deal for him. So, uh, Hey, if you're good, you're good. It doesn't matter what, what weight. So, nope. uh, drop a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts. And, uh, thanks again for watching cactus wrestling. Thanks for watching. We are cactus wrestling and we'll see you next time on our next video.